everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy that you wanted to join me today because today I am going to talk to you about bioplastic. This is by far the most requested video within this series, so I am so excited that I am finally making it for you guys. And I am starting on doing something new, I've done it with the last two videos, um, where you can find the entire script, everything I say here, you can find it on my blog as well. So if you are hearing impaired, or if you want to show this to a friend who is, um, that is perhaps a better option. I literally cannot or do not have time to figure out the subtitles thing on YouTube to make it just halfway decent. And so I decided to simply just publish my scripts instead and hopefully that works out for everyone. So uh, it is down below if you want to read this instead of hearing it. But before we get started, I also have some giveaway winners to announce. I made a contest last week on Instagram where I gave away five memberships to my online sustainability course and I just really wanted to announce the winners in this video because it's kind of fitting. Today is the 22nd of April, which is Earth Day. Yeehaw! So that's why I thought that would be kind of fitting. So uh, these are the winners of the giveaway. I just, I just, uh, me goals first memory. So here we go. It is Isabella and Bonnie, Lindsay, Camilla and Natasha. So uh, I have sent you an email. So look out in your inbox there should be an email from me and from the International Open Academy with information on how to access your free sustainability course. Congratulations, now let's get into the video. So over 18 trillion pounds of plastic have been produced in this world to date. And over 18 billion pounds of plastic flow into our oceans every single year, affecting marine life and ecosystems. And there are actually even microplastic in your body right now. Since I started my zero waste journey about five years ago, I've spent hundreds of hours looking up sustainable alternatives to plastic. And over the last couple of years, bioplastic, compostable plastic, plant-based plastic have become more and more visible on the market. And that's why I think it's really important that we have all the basics and that we know as much as we can about these products before we use them. There's also one question that keeps coming back and that is, is it actually better than plastic? So the bioplastic industry has an annual turnover of over 2 trillion euros a year and it accounts for 22 million jobs in the EU. So that's very significant. However, the bioplastic industry only still accounts for about 1% of the global usage of plastic. I've said bioplastic quite a few times without really explaining what it is, I reckon. The term bioplastic covers a wide range of products and some of them are as different as night and day. But generally it refers to products that are made in a plastic-like material that is based on plant-based fibers rather than petroleum. That's what it is. But of course it's a little bit more complicated than that, so let's keep going. <laughs> Bioplastic is made through the extraction of sugar from stuff like corn or sugarcane, and they're made into PLAs. But they can also be engineered from microorganisms into PHAs, or this. PHAs is easier to say. Because plastic has been getting a bad rip, bioplastics have become a substitute that many companies, stores and consumers are welcoming. Although only a small percentage of plastic is replaced by bioplastic, it's only becoming more and more visible. Today, the most common products that have had a change of material are disposables like straws, plastic bags, food packaging and to-go coffee cups. These products that were criticized for being unnecessary for most consumers can now be found in versions that are made with bioplastic. An effect of that is often that consumers will feel less bad about using disposables because now they come in a plastic-free alternative. However, all this stuff that bioplastic is promising seems too good to be true, which means that it probably is. We are jumping straight into recycling because honestly I feel this is where a lot of the good stuff really is and a lot of the interesting parts as well. Let's have a look at the ideal life cycle of bioplastic. First of all, we have to make the bioplastic. Bioplastic is usually made out of building blocks that are plant-based like cellulose, corn, starch, sugar. It's also made out of biopolymers containing biogenic carbon taken from the atmosphere and turned into a bio-based plastic using chemistry. Yes, I have a university degree. Chemistry, am I right? This was all I was able to gather from this process, so... The bioplastic that comes out of this process have different properties. Some are compostable, some are recyclable. It depends on the building blocks and how they are mixed together. 
These products can be used for a wide range of purposes, while some are disposable after one use, others can have longer lifespans. When it comes to recycling, now we're getting into it. Okay, there's several options, one of which is called mechanical recycling. This means that the materials are turned into new raw materials without changing the basic structure of the material. I'm saying material quite a lot here, I, I hear it. Another option is organic recycling. Here, energy is recovered from the material through a process, which is more or less the same as composting but on a larger scale and in a facility with a controlled environment. The CO2 and the compost from the biomass can be used for plant growth and those plants can then again be extracted for the production of new building blocks. This model is made by the European bioplastic industry, but even they are actually admitting that this is only a theoretical model and it does not account for every single piece of bioplastic in production or in use. There's so many variables that affect the impact of these products and they are so, so different. Everything affects it from what kind of raw materials are used, what type of bioplastic it is, the means of transportation, the conversion technology, and what kind of recovery and recycling facilities that are in place once the product is discarded. European bioplastics and the LCA model also does not take into account what old bioplastic can be used for in the circular loop. It only accounts for new bioplastics. So even though the loop is circular, it only really works with new plastic and new bioplastic, which does, does honestly seem a lot like the opposite of circular. In reality, there should be another step in this model called unrecycled or unclaimed, because a lot of these items will end up in landfill or at waste to energy incinerator plants, just like normal trash. So, bioplastics versus plastic, the showdown the musical. When it comes to the impact and the sustainability factor of bioplastic, what is often referred to is the CO2. About 8% of all oil in the world is used for plastic production. And the way that works is that oil, aka fossil materials, are dragged or extracted out of the ground. And that is a process that releases CO2 and methane. And methane is a greenhouse gas that is 25 times more potent than CO2. There's also the notion that petroleum-based plastic releases CO2 and methane once it starts to degrade, not compost, but degrade into smaller bits, then it releases some of that energy that is stored inside of it. A bio-based plastic product will also release CO2 once it degrades. However, because it's made from plant fibers, the CO2 it releases is the same amount of CO2 as the plant it's made from extracted out of the air while it was growing. Therefore, materials that are made from 100% plant fibers will have a lower carbon footprint than normal petroleum-based plastic. According to European Bioplastics, substituting the European demand annually for PE, one type of plastic, would save the world for 42 million tons of CO2, which is the same as flying around the Earth 10 million times. And that is something. Yeah, I'll give them that. That is something. However, there are also other factors that we need to take into account when we are looking at the sustainability aspect. First of all, we have to dedicate land to grow the plants that we need for bioplastic production. And that sort of disregards the notion that poverty and hunger is still a very real thing many, many places in the world. However, bioplastics can be made everywhere in the world, whereas petroleum-based plastic is very limited to very few regions. And that could actually open up possibilities for jobs and decrease poverty. However, increasing our usage of bioplastic disposables is still something that concerns me. Our starch-based to-go coffee cup is simply just not more important than someone's dinner. But at least it's easier to recycle bioplastics rather than normal plastic, right? Well, bioplastics need to break down in organic recycling in order for us to recover some of the materials and energy used to make the product, and that requires an industrial compost. An industrial compost is just a really, really big compost, but it's very controlled, the environment is always stable, and it uses very high temperatures to make sure everything has been broken down. If that does not happen, the lifespan of many bioplastic products will be exactly the same as normal plastic. If it ends up in landfill, it won't compost. If it's dropped in nature, it won't break down. It will degrade into microplastic that will affect our ecosystems, animals and even our own bodies. I've read through reports and statistics about bioplastic and it seems like a lot of them are not taking into account that tons of products with bioplastic materials are not 100% plant-based. A lot of the products that have bioplastic qualities are mixed materials. So we have mixed bioplastics 
with petroleum plastic. And that's actually even worse because mixed materials have no chance of being recycled or reused because it's mixed. There are no facilities that can take them apart again. And as a result, they will always end up in landfill or in waste to energy incinerator plants. And that's, in my opinion, even worse than 100% petroleum based plastic because at least you can recycle something unideally and inefficiently, but at least you can do something. The biggest issue when it comes to bioplastics is that it is an umbrella term that covers so many products, a wide range of products, and they are so, so different. I have been so lucky to find two pieces of compostable plastic that actually composts in my normal home indoor compost bin. But you can also be super unlucky and find bioplastics or compostable plastics that have absolutely no plant-based or compostable qualities and are 100% the same as petroleum-based plastic. And that's just greenwashing. I have been in countless shops and restaurants where I have refused plastic with just a symbol, oh, no straw for me, I'll be fine, I don't do plastic, so just save it for someone else. To which the waiter or the service employee have replied with a, oh, don't worry, it's compostable plastic. And I get super excited. I become all like, cool, you have, you have a compost? My, oh my. I become so, so happy and it's never the case. They always have to tell me that, oh yeah, it is compostable, but we, we throw it out like normal trash. And then it's not being composted at all. It has the exact same lifespan and the exact same fate as normal plastic. And that just really bums me out. The problem here is not that someone is misunderstanding the idea of what bioplastic or, com or compostable plastic is. The problem is that we have an idea that is technically good, but we have no way and near established enough facilities or systems for this to actually work. It doesn't make any sense to have a compostable product without a compost. If that's the case, then it's just normal trash. And that's not on the consumer, that is on the industry. Landfills are just tombs for trash. There are no air, there's no soil, nothing. Even simple kitchen scraps like a carrot can take years to break down. In my opinion, it's still a good idea to avoid unnecessary disposables and single-use products, even if they're made of bioplastics. I hope we're going to see more positive development in this industry in the future because I think it's important to recognize that the world we've built, the world that we live in right now, cannot function without a material like plastic. We just need, and the industry just needs, to figure out a way of making it and producing it without taking a toll on the planet. And that means developing more technologies within the plant to plastics industry. Zero waste has never been more difficult than during this pandemic. A plastic product, a disposable single-use product, can save someone's life. And that's just really, really important to recognize. I hope going forward that we will be able to see improvements in the bioplastics industry. We want to see less mixed materials and more options when it comes to organic recycling and composting in local areas. And I would love to see more reuse and refill stations as well. Again, the idea is good. And generally, bioplastic does actually have a lower carbon footprint than petroleum-based plastic. But it's mostly in theory, and we need to make sure that the industry of these plastic alternatives continue going forward. That was my two cents on bioplastics versus normal plastics. Let me know down below if you have any experiences with bioplastics, or if you like this video, let me know. I would love for you to subscribe to this channel and support me. That would make my day, oh my god. And take really good care of yourselves and stay safe. And never, ever, ever feel ashamed if you need disposable plastics to survive. Just wanted to put that out there. Have an amazing day, guys. And yeah, stay safe. And I see you guys in my next video. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!